So here at Fort Polk, uh, we're going to be integrating our project origin platforms, which are surrogates for the robotic combat vehicle, uh, into the opposing forces, the op force uh, task organization. Uh, right now, this week, what we're doing is we're doing new equipment training. So we're letting the operators take the platforms out, familiarize themselves with the operation, learning how to do troubleshooting and employ its payloads. So over the course of the next two weeks, they're able to take these systems into the training area and employ them against Blue 4. Uh, based on all the lessons learned from our previous experience is with soldiers at Fort Benning in Germany and uh, most recently at Camp Grayling uh, when we conducted a live fire. So all of their uh, suggestions and improvements that they wanted on the system, uh, we've incorporated all of those. A new controller, uh, some new autonomous behaviors, um, a couple of their small payloads, and we're going to see how they perform. This is a little bit different, so we've been slowly progressing to force on force. Uh, we started out with uh, no opposition force in Germany where we just gave the robots to the soldiers and then they kind of exercised them in the field uh, to see how they would utilize them, uh, but there was no enemy that they were fighting. Uh, then we went to Fort Benning, Georgia, and we had limited force on force with and without robots. Uh, learned a lot, um, but our missions were short. They were three hours, four hours, six hours. Um, we're now gonna go into the box um, against the 101st Airborne Division, a, on a, a joint area in this training center, uh, full rotation. And this is, we're giving them the robots and they have them for 24 seven for two weeks. And we're gonna have minimal interaction with them. Um, so it's kind of on them uh, to build their tactics, techniques and procedures of how they would use the robots. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is a new environment. It's been raining for like four days now. <laughs> um, we really haven't been out in prolonged rain. So we'll get to see how the, how the robots perform uh, in that environment, uh, as well as the, the terrain's a little bit different. It's a lot more swampy, uh, a lot more pine trees, um, and some other thick vegetation that'll interfere with our communication. The 101st is going to try to find us uh, through radio frequency detection, um, and then obviously moving forward and, and making contact with the robots. So it should be a, it should be a great experience and we should have a lot of lessons learned out of this. We're really excited. Uh, this is kind of a culmination of everything we've done with Origin over the last couple of years to, to do a true force on force for multi-day operations. This week we are training up basically to get certified enough to use it in the box it, again in rotation against RTU and see what the MUT and Project Origin is all about. After I got a little bit of experience with it, I realized that its versatility can be used in multiple aspects to help all of us, like all the infantry and combat arms in general, with the smoke, the gun, the, all that, the UAV, all that. Pretty compact with what we need to use it for, especially for us, because like out in the box, we're known for like being stealthy, sneaky, and always attacking our team when they least expect it, especially at night. And it's uh, cameled up good, which we, love to do here and so I think it would work really good for us against them. Getting the soldiers to get these components in hand is really giving us vital feedback for uh, you know button placement, uh, overall usability because um, sometimes the engineer looks at it and like okay I think this should go here but when the soldier who has a more uh, tactical mindset and is using them you know to actually save lives out in the field. They, they can look at it and say, this is not going to work for us. And that, that feedback is, is vital. The way that um, the developers are doing everything, I think they're really trying to work on the ins and outs of it, trying to design it 100% so where it's not a 60% chance that it'll work or an 80%, they want it to be 100%. So I'm glad that they're, they're doing a lot of test runs um, going forward. This particular experiment is very significant because we have never employed robots in a manner where we can actually learn the TTPs and SOPs and how to defeat enemy robots. Also the reason why it's important is Geronimo, first the 509th, has a lot more flexibility in how they employ these systems than traditional forces do. So we believe we're gonna get some very creative use cases, um, maybe some new ways of looking at the problem, and develop new value propositions for the RCV 
given their ability to creatively solve the problem through non-traditional means. So one of the things that's really good about this exercise is, is the partnerships that we've had with uh, PEO ChemBio, Armament Center, uh, the CFT, uh, Major Wallace and, and, and the Next Gen Combat Vehicle Team. Uh, General Kaufman's been just a huge advocate of Origin and uh, ensuring that all the lessons learned from Origin are brought over to RCV for evaluation to see if that should be on the robotic combat vehicle. Um, and then obviously all the information that we, we gain from this experiment uh, will go down to the Army Capabilities Manager Infantry and the Robotics Requirements Division for the uh, Small Mission Equipment Transport Program of Record. So we have a new controller that is uh, strictly for dismounts and um, we'll get a lot of good feedback on that. We've taken a lot of time developing that controller to make sure that we get it right and we think we have a pretty good solution and we'll find out. Right, this is our, our test. And if we pass, then um, we'll take that information, good and bad, over to uh, Product Manager Robotics and Autonomous Systems for the Small Mission Equipment Transport uh, Program. And we'll let them know this is a soldier approved solution. Um, and then they'll build the, the requirements to get that in, in the hands of the, of the soldiers. These vehicles are going to be the last time they're implemented in, a, in an operational experiment like this. We're moving forward with a increment two, a version two of the Project Origin platform. It's going to be a track vehicle. So while we'll have these vehicles in the rotation, they will not be the primary vehicle for future experiments. Uh, these vehicles have, have done about five or six different soldier touch points now. And uh, using the data collected from those touch points, we've improved, we've iterated on them. And those improvements are going to be seen in that, second, that next version of the Origin platform. We're, we're super excited about our next uh, uh, mission that we're going to do. Uh, we had uh, two members of the First Special Forces group here, uh, one of the Operational Detachment Alpha teams. Uh, they spent the week with us um, taking notes um, in, so they can inform their team what the capabilities are on the robots. And then uh, February of next year, we're going to go out with them to the field in, uh, I'll just say, the West Coast. And uh, we're going to conduct some operations with them. Uh, they are a HALO, a high altitude, low opening team. And uh, we are going to deliver Origin in a unique way, actually two unique ways. And I'm not going to spoil it right now, um, but we are super excited. It's going to uh, dramatically increase the, uh, the ability to deploy these worldwide uh, short notice and then bring that uh, um, unmanned capability to the operating force. Another fantastic opportunity associated with this experiment is that it affords us the ability to showcase all the work that's been done in the past three years and highlight what robotic and autonomous systems can provide for formation. JRTC is a huge stage. The Army sees it, the world sees it. So being able to take these platforms out and have them perform on that stage allows the Army to understand the capability that Team Origin and Team RCV are working to provide it in the future and help it gain an understanding of where we are going and what kind of capability we're going to provide to soldiers to enable them to be more effective in future formations.